Welcome to the SciMed Micro Channel, which shows the world around us under a microscope. We will now watch how a good office scanner can magnify granular and powdered foods like a camera equipped with a macro lens. The images taken are in focus over the entire frame. What are yellow split peas doing on a scanner? Waiting to have their image taken similar to the amaranth seeds shown on the computer monitor at right. Here, an image of the split pea was obtained at a relatively low scanner resolution of 600 dpi. And the image has been taken at a much higher resolution of 4800 dpi. Split peas are an agricultural product made from the dried, peeled and split seeds of Pisum sativum of green and yellow varieties. They are used to make excellent soups and side dishes. The next images show smaller particles of various foods in granular or powder forms. The settings of the scanner and the computer are summarized at the end of this video for viewers who wish to experiment with their own samples. Most people are familiar with table salt, the cubic crystals of sodium chloride. It is evident that crystallization was the final step in its production. So, these are the images of a mineral more precious than gold? Yes, if you remember the fairy tale salt above gold, common to many nations. Gold powder would not make our food taste good, so we do not say Please pass the gold at the dining table. Sodium chloride, however, is a necessity of animal life. In contrast, MSG, that is, monosodium glutamate, is not a necessity. It is used as a flavor enhancer, which intensifies the meaty, savory flavor of foods. It is generally recognized as safe. Food scientist Steve Witherly hypothesized that it may even promote healthy eating by making kale more delicious and also by containing less sodium than the table salt that is sodium chloride. The long needle-like crystals of MSG are distinctly different from the cubes of sodium chloride. Who is curious to see ground coffee particles in detail? Companies which make coffee grinders. Coffee drinkers may wish to compare their ground coffee with the coffee which their friends like. Are the particles small or large, sharp or dull, compact or porous? If you ask these questions, place the ground coffee onto the scanner, not the drink. Then press the scan button and start arguing. For details, please check the text part of this video. Yellow cornmeal is a coarse flour ground from dry corn grains. It is produced in fine, medium and coarse grades, not as fine as wheat flour. Boiled cornmeal is called polenta in Italy and is consumed as a bread substitute in Romania. While milling the wheat grains, the rollers flake off the bran and the germ, whereas the starchy endosperm is cracked into coarse pieces. Sifting separates the bran from the semolina, which is shown here. The semolina is then ground into flour. Semolina made from durum wheat is pale yellow, but semolina from softer types of wheat is white and the product is called flour, not semolina. In the United States it is also called farina. Wheat flour is a powder made from the milling of wheat. White flour is made from the starchy endosperm only, whereas whole wheat flour is made from the entire grain, including the bran, endosperm and germ. The endosperm and the rest are milled separately and then they are all recombined. Bread flour is made from hard wheat and has a very high protein content. Blending flour is milled using a special process to provide a granular flour that blends smoothly and easily into wet or dry ingredients. It is noticeable by its uniform grain sizes and is used for sauces and gravies. All-purpose or plain flour is made of hard and soft sorts of wheat and suitable for most household baking. Breadfruit flour is not made from the grains but from the fruit of a flowering tree, 
Artocarpus artilis, which originated in the South Pacific and then has spread to the rest of Oceania. A single tree may produce 200 or more grapefruit-sized fruits per season. The flour behaves like wheat flour during baking, yet it is free of gluten. All types of bran are concentrated sources of fiber, which is the outer fibrous layer of a grain. Different kinds of bran, however, act in different ways in the body. Wheat bran has the highest fiber content, up to 40%, and is rich in insoluble fiber. It can absorb up to seven times its weight in water and contributes to the softening of stool. Alone, it tastes dry and chaff-like. Old bran looks whiter than wheat bran because it contains more starch and is more palatable with 17% fiber in soluble form, a so-called beta-glucan. This substance has several health benefits. It is advisable to increase the daily intake of liquids with any bran. Chia seeds are the edible seeds of Salvia hispanica, native to Central America, or of the related Salvia columbariae of the southwestern United States and Mexico. The seeds are oval and either white or black, that is, gray with black spots, having a diameter around 1 mm. The seeds are hydrophilic, able to absorb up to 12 times their weight in liquid when soaked and developing a mucilaginous coating that gives chia-based foods and beverages a distinctive gel texture. Unless the seed coat of chia seeds is broken, the seeds pass through our intestinal tract without a change. To be used as a food, they have to be ground as shown here. The gel from ground seeds may be used to replace as much as 25% of the egg and oil content in cakes. Flex seed is the product of flex, an annual blue-blooming plant. The seeds are a rich source of the essential fatty acid, alpha-linolenic acid, also known as omega-3. The seeds also contain antioxidants, proteins and dietary fiber. Flex seed may help lower the risk of diabetes, cancer and heart disease. Flex is grown for its fiber to be processed by the textile industry into linen, bed sheets, underclothes and table linen. The seeds yield linseed oil. Its high concentration of the unsaturated alpha-linolenic acid leads to spontaneous oxidation and polymerization of the oil exposed to air. This process is known as drying and in combination with pigments, linseed oil is used by artists in the creation of oil paintings. Linseed oil is used as varnish in wood finishing and as a plasticizer and hardener in the production of putty. This oil was essential in the invention of linoleum. Granules of Fleischmann's active dry yeast consist of Saccharomyces cerevisiae cells. The yeast cells serve as a livening agent causing the dough to rise by producing carbon dioxide and ethanol from fermentable sugars present in the dough. Fleischmann's dry yeast does not require refrigeration. Tapioca pearls, balls or boba are made from cassava starch by mixing it with boiling water until a kneadable consistency is achieved. The dough is cut and rolled into a spherical shape. In the Gangsor method, the starch is placed into a long, long cylindrical twill cloth bag and a jerking motion is used to toss the starch lumps back and forth. The lumps become firmer and gain a spherical shape. The process is repeated until the pearls have roughly become the desired size. Then the pearls are sorted according to size. They are used as a thickening agent in foods like pudding, and to complement sweet drinks such as milk tea. Amaranth grain was a staple food of the Aztecs in South America and also part of their religious ceremonies. Upon the conquest of the Aztec nation, the conquistadors banned growing amaranth in order to decimate the local people by hunger. 
The grains are inedible when raw and must be cooked like other grains. They are free of gluten, but also of essential amino acids leucine and threonine. Both amino acids are present in weed germs. These edible teff seeds are native to the Horn of Africa, what is today Ethiopia and Eritrea. It is one of the most important cereals in that area, an annual bunch grass, a species of love grass. Teff straw is fed to the cattle. 1,000 grains weigh approximately one-third of a gram. Being so small, teff grains cook more quickly than larger seeds and the cooking needs less fuel. The gluten-free teff flour is used to produce baked goods. Celery seed does not come from celery, but from its wild ancestors sometimes called smolich, lavich or Chinese celery. They are all in the same family as parsley and the carrot. Celery leaves and seeds were widely used by the ancient Greeks and Romans. The largest amount is imported from China, but India and France are additional major producers. Bread crumbs are the ground residue of dry bread. They used to be made at home for a long time to be used for breading foods for frying, like breaded cutlets, for topping casseroles, stuffing poultry, thickening stews, and for adding inexpensive bulk to soups, meatloaves, and similar foods. A commercial variety of Japanese origin of bread crumbs is called panko. It is made from bread baked without a crust, so no colored crust particles may be found in their images. Panko is designed to retain only a small amount of oil when used in the frying of breaded meats. Birds consume large quantities of seeds in nature and also at bird feeders. In the United States, over 500,000 tons of bear seed is used to feed wild bears annually. Song bears are kept in cages as pets in over 7 million households there. Unlike wild bears, caged bears satisfy all their nutritional needs from commercial bear seed. This is achieved with its variety, as may be seen in pet food stores. Niger seed is irresistible to many song bears. It comes from a tropical thistle. As bird seed, it is sterilized to prevent germination and becoming an invasive plant. The former images have been made possible because I was able to use a flatbed scanner with maximum optical resolution of 9600 dpi, interpolated 12800 dpi. My idea of taking images of small particles at a high resolution and expanding them over a larger area was thus easy to realize. There are many kinds of scanners available, for example those stitching together large pieces of architectural drawings or reproducing accurately the colors of pieces of art. Only so-called very high resolution scanners operate at 4800 dpi and very few work at 9600 dpi. None of the scanners reviewed is offering images of small objects. Powders, such as grain flour, need to be spread in a thin layer to capture the individual powder particles. A two-sided sticky sheet or tape helps to solve the problem. Firmly attached to a black plastic sheet, the exposed sticky side is lightly pressed onto the flower surface and the excess flower is removed using a fine brush and a stream of air. Then the flower sample and the ruler are placed upside down on the scanner glass. The images of wheat flower shown earlier were obtained in this way. The lid of every scanner is white. It was used earlier to show ground coffee particles, teff seeds and may be used to show poppy seeds. In many other cases, such as amaranth seeds or ground chia seeds, etc., it is preferable to cover the samples with a black plate before closing the lid to obtain a better contrast. 
The effect of scanner resolution was checked using pearl barley seen on the glass plate. One scanner had the maximum resolution of 1200 dpi. In the resulting image, the grains may be recognized, but the image quality is poor. The next image has been obtained at the same 1200 dpi resolution using a scanner with the maximum resolution of 9600 dpi. Although the same resolution was used, this image is considerably better. The same area was then scanned at 4800 dpi and a smaller area is shown in the next image. The image is sharp and it could be enlarged even more. The sharpness of all images had been adjusted using Adobe Photoshop software. In conclusion, all images shown have been obtained using an office scanner with the resolution set at 600, 4800 and even 9600 dpi. A millimeter rule was scanned at the same time to calculate the magnification of each image. The areas scanned have to be small because the file size grows with increased resolution and sample size and the scanning takes longer time. Placing powders into a scanner should be done with care in order not to damage it. Mineral crystals are potentially risky because they may scratch the glass. Using a small vacuum cleaner is advisable. The procedure described makes it possible to immediately obtain images showing size distribution, contamination and other peculiarities. Other benefits may be discovered by practical experiments. The author has already paid himself with this pile of coins. If you believe that he deserves the wealth shown, kindly add your like and tell your friends please. I wish you success with your experiments.